Hey guys, so I'm out today on a hike to Mare Bleu Bog. It's one of the southernmost bogs here in Canada, which is really, really cool. Um, so I have a few months back, I asked you guys in a video um, things that you wanted to, little birds <laughs> flying around me, um, what you guys wanted to see on my channel. And one of them was, uh, you know, take us to your favorite hiking spot. Um, so thanks for the idea, Trapper Joe and Mark Martin. Um, and I'm also going to answer a few questions that uh, came up on one of my videos. So stay tuned. So they feed the birds here at the bog and uh, so you can see just standing here as I'm starting my video, they're really excited and hopping around. So this place is really special. It's a piece of the north here down in the south and it's a really nice conservation area. There's a huge acidic peat bog with a boardwalk around it and there's lots of trails through the woods um, that you can also take a look out on some ridges to some marshlands around here. So very significant habitat um, for a lot of wildlife as well as uh, you can see some northern plants down here that you would never see otherwise. Let's go take a look. I'm just walking along this little trail here and they've got some really nice um, little kiosks here that you can understand a bit more about what's going on with the bog. So here's our little trail map just of the bog boardwalk. Um, so we're here, we're going to take you all through uh, this bog right here. So it's about a 1.2 kilometer loop. Um, there's usually a 12 kilometer trail through the woods that I'll go through this way and I'll go through after I tell you all about the bog. So I sort of stumbled upon this area many years ago. I think it used to be used in um, military training because there's some berms kind of back there um, where people used to shoot into and practice. Um, then once they realized what a special and significant area this is, it became designated as a, uh, a conservation area. So in this area, the conservation area, it's about 32 square kilometers and about 50% of it is the peat bog, which is really neat. So how did this form? So 10,000 years ago, the Ottawa River um, had a big channel in through this area. And so the water was all through here. And then eventually, um, about 8,000 years ago, uh, the one channel was cut off. And so a small, well, I guess it was a pretty large lake actually, filled this area. And as the lake was sort of here, what happened was that you can see Lots of vegetation came in, so we're talking cattails and other aquatic plants. And eventually, those grew in and sort of closed down uh, the surface area of the lake and all the materials kind of decomposed and there was heavy root matter there from all the plants. And what that did was it supported the growth of things like mosses, like peat moss or sphagnum. So that started developing there and encroaching in on the center of the lake. And as that was happening, there was sort of dead vegetation that would sink to the bottom. And eventually in this lake, it became completely kind of covered over with a lot of these plants and sphagnum moss. The environment became more and more acidic in the peat bog um, and the surface became more convex. And so now the nutrition from rainfall sort of provides a mineral source for the bog. So it's really cool. You can see sort of the remnants here of uh, the marshlands. So you can imagine the, uh, the peat bog being very acidic. Only certain things can grow here, so not some of the typical things that you would expect. Um, so once we get into the bog, you'll see things like Labrador tea, uh, leather leaf, um, there's tamaracks, alders, and black spruce, which we usually have sort of white spruce around here. Black spruce is typically a northern conifer, but you can see it here, which is pretty cool. There's all kinds of um, berries as well. Um, berry picking here is forbidden because it is a conservation area. Um, so we can just kind of look and enjoy. It is fall now, um, so we may just see some dried up berries or nothing at all on the plants. So here you can see a a beaver house, a beaver lodge. A really good area for beaver and muskrat in here. That's a really nice looking beaver lodge, good size. That's relatively new, that was not there um, when I visited a while ago. So now we're approaching some of the areas um, where the trees have started to grow. Right here we have the tamarack, which is a conifer that sheds its needles in the winter. It turns a beautiful yellow color and all the needles fall off. I'm told people on the east coast call that tree the juniper, which is really cool. So this bog um, is quite acidic, I mentioned earlier. Uh, it's a pretty harsh environment, so only certain trees and plants can grow here. 
So the pH, um, or measure of acidity of this bog, uh, it's three. So vinegar um, is two, and the lower the number is, um, the more acidic things are. For example, your blood is pretty neutral, so it's a pH of seven. It is a logarithmic scale. So at a pH of three, it's about a thousand times more acidic than say milk, for example. So let's take a look at some of these plants here and see all the larches kind of coming up here. I'll show you to where the black spruce are. Now here's a little soggy part that you would expect with a peat bog. And when I push down on it, it's really, really spongy. The boardwalk is through this area so that we just don't damage a lot of the fragile plants in this ecosystem. There is a lot of peat in here. So in this bog, um, there's about five meters deep of peat moss. So that's all formed, you know, in that acidic lack of oxygen environment. So that's a lot of peat. Um, and this is just a small portion of the peatlands we have here. I mean, in the north, we have a lot more. So you can only imagine um, the amount of resources we have there. I'm told that it could be a really good future source for fossil fuels, um, peat moss that is. Though in some areas it's very frozen obviously in the north so it's very difficult to extract um, and use for that purpose. So, But it's, it's on the list of things that we could use in the future for good fossil fuel. And there is a tiny little spruce coming up right now. So in this bog there are lots of uh, cool plants so we've got laurels and leather leaves and Labrador teas in here. So it's very neat stuff I just would not see anywhere else. It's a bit challenging for me to identify since I just don't see these all the time. There are medicinal plants here in this bog but because it is a conservation area I'm forbidden from picking them or picking any of the berries or leaves uh, on uh, these plants. So I'll have to try them some other way. <laughs> But uh, not today, I can't pick anything from here, unfortunately. But fortunately, I guess, because I want to keep these around um, so the future generations can see something like this here in the south. Here we have a leather leaf bush. So again, it has some of those small little leaves. And here you can see where there were some little berries that dried on the bush from the summer. I don't know how well you guys can see that, but it looks like a little rabbit's tail stuck to a, a stem. However, that is actually a kind of plant. So all these plants that I've been sort of showing you as I'm doing close-up shots here, um, this one right here, it's called the Labrador tea. Now we're forbidden from picking them in this area, so I can just kind of show you what they look like. Underneath them there, they've got that kind of little brownish color. Medicinally, Labrador tea uh, has been used for many things, uh, including, you know, when you have a cold, um, coughs, chest congestion, things like that. So also, um, because it's very moist, you can tend to see a lot of willows as well. So you can see the little red stems in there. One of the common uses of willow um, is obviously pain control. So soreness on the uh, trail, some people used to chew on the willow, the willow bark, or make a tea out of it. Looks like I've got a little friend on the trail that's following me along, probably looking for a handout. It's a little red squirrel. Oh, he's got an itch. Oh, he's got fleas. <laughs> Aren't they cute? All through the bog, you can see these little animal footpaths. If you look off into the distance, there's little, there's little lumps. Well, there's actually trails all through here um, from wildlife that are... Uh, Probably eating some of the berries as they go through here, what's left of them. So I'm just going to take a bit of a break here on the trail and answer some of your questions. I know that, um, I think it was back in my 300 subs giveaway, uh, I'd asked you guys to put your questions of me in the comments. And so I've uh, made a list of them and I'm sort of randomly scrambling them. Uh, and I'll pick a few of them and answer them for you today. All right, so let's answer some questions. Um, so I'm using a random number generator to kind of pick from the list of questions that I got from you guys. So I got number 13, so let's see what that is. What's my favorite pastime? Well, I'd have to say it's actually making videos, um, which is a good thing, I guess, for having a YouTube channel. Uh, I really enjoy um, going out, exploring new places, filming, 
and uh, sharing with everybody what I'm up to and some cool things that I'm exploring or trying out. So I'd have to say, you know, next to sort of being in the woods and going to the cabin, making videos would be my most favorite pastime. Next question, favorite food or meal? Well, I don't know, that's a tough one. I really like my food. Uh, favorite thing would probably be, I like bannock over the fire. I think that's pretty good. And I've made that deep dish bannock pizza. That's awesome as well. Um, I just like a lot of food, so <laughs> it's really hard for me to pick one. And those questions were from Colin Kievel from Stanshire Homesteading. So thanks Colin for those great questions. Phyllis Mulkey uh, has the next question for me. And is that, are you gonna live in your cabin or have it as a getaway once it's all done? Well, for now, it's uh, gonna be a getaway. It's a four season getaway right now. The little birds are totally <laughs> wanting to come in to see me here. Um, so yeah, right now it is a getaway. Um, our hope is maybe in the future to build another um, home on the land, um, but it is fairly remote, so it's difficult uh, to sort of work there and live there. If I could figure out a way to work there and live in the wilderness, that would be fantastic. So for now, thanks Phyllis for the question. It will be uh, a getaway. The next question is what camera and equipment do I use um, for filming these videos for you guys. Well, um, right now I'm filming on my Canon SX40HS. Um, so that's a point and shoot, uh, has video HD capabilities, and it's really good because it's got a huge, I think 40 times super zoom. So when I can zoom in and take lots of really cool pictures uh, and stills, and the video quality is pretty good. Um, the microphone isn't great, so um, from a distance, like as you can see now, I'm, um, I am body mic'd. I got my body mic from Henry's, uh, it's a camera store, it's a, a lower end one, but it helps to make the quality of the videos a little bit better. I've gotten a bit away from that because it is difficult to synchronize the sound on my videos, but uh, I guess I should stop being lazy and just uh, do it more often because I think it's better. You guys can hear me a lot better and kind of cuts out some of that wind noise. The other things I use, um, I have a GoPro Hero 4 Silver. Um, so that one I'll use sometimes. Uh, definitely has a waterproof case so I can do some fishing shots with it underwater. I can wear it on my head, um, mount it to the snowmobile, things like that. So I really enjoy that. Other times I'm just using um, my cell phone. Um, this is a Nexus 5S I believe. And um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's great too and has really good video quality. Um, each thing I have shoots in different frames per second so that becomes a little bit of a nightmare in terms of uh, synchronizing and making you know one film with a particular frames per second rate. Um, thankfully for the GoPro, I can adjust it um, to the 23 frames per second that my Canon um, SX40HS shoots at. Next question comes from Terry Milburn. It's, what's next on my menu? Well, uh, the chickadees would be hoping that I'd be having something with seeds in it, but uh, you know, I've been making uh, some soup uh, it's called hamburger soup, so it's really awesome. It's got lots of uh, veggies in it and hamburger meat, so extremely tasty. And I made a huge pot of it for my lunches. So some of you guys saw a photo of that recently in my uh, Facebook. And on that note, uh, if you guys don't know, I do have a uh, the Wild Yam Facebook. If you're not already signed up for it uh, to get sort of every, I post every day basically, um, on there. Um, don't forget to click the link uh, in the description box below as that will tell you how to access the Facebook. And the last question I'll answer for you guys today is what is your most favorite wild edible? And I'd have to say, you know, for looking at the greens and things that I can sort of pick in the woods, it would probably be the wild leek. Um, it's a great flavor. You can make soups, salads, all that kind of stuff with it. Um, so that's, that is one of my favorite uh, things to eat. Of course, you know, there's the berries as well and they're really, really tasty. Um, but now that I know a lot about wild edibles or more than I did, um, yeah, I go, you know, look outside in the forest and I just see a grocery store. So it's really awesome. So thanks guys, uh, I've answered a few of your questions. Um, if you have any other questions, you know, you can always ask them down below in the comments and I'll save them up for a future video. Now that break's over, let's uh, head on our hike a little bit further. So here in the background, you can see a bunch of tall conifers. And you can see that they have little sort of bunches sort of toward the top there. 
So those are black spruce. So we don't see a lot of them around this area, but certainly here in the bog, you can see them. So there's some bunchberry. There's a, it's a four leafed plant right there. Um, but these are not bunch berries. These are coming off of the shrub. And there is a brown leaf attached to them. And when you squish them, it's kind of a strong yellow color inside these berries. So I don't have my field guide here with me today, so I certainly won't be collecting them. You definitely want to identify things 110% before you harvest them for eating. When I squashed one of the berries, it had a really bad smell as well. So it tells me that it's probably not very edible. Um, if you guys have any idea what it is, you can let me know down below in the comments. Here, you can see we've got some uh, beautiful poplars. You can hear their leaves sort of smacking around in the breeze. Wow, I'm just hiking along and this tree is literally hanging on by a thread. The beavers have really done this one in. Look at that, it's just ready to fall. Jeez. Wouldn't it be awesome to set up a trail camera here and sort of uh, point it at their lodge and see them build it? That would be awesome. Here we go, that's how busy they've been. All up and in here. Wild. They are industrious, that's for sure. Thanks so much guys for joining me on today's adventure here at the Mer Bleu Bog. And stay tuned for more adventures. Hope you guys have an awesome week and we'll see you later.